Ah, go ahead. My father was the greatest man in the world. I was his only child. His one dread was that I should make a foolish marriage and lose what little money he was able to leave me. The 30 million. Oh, don't precisely. interrupt. He made me promise that whenever a man asked me to marry him, I was to impose a condition on my consent. So what condition? I was to give him £150 and tell him that if within six months he changed that £150 into 50000 I was his. If not, I was never to see him again. I saw the wisdom of this. Nobody but my father could have thought of such a, a real, infallible and sentimental test. I gave him my sacred promise that I would carry it out faithfully. And you broke that promise, I see. What do you mean, broke that promise? Well, you married Alistair. Now, Alistair's a dear good fellow, and he's one of, one of the best in his way. But you're not going to persuade me he made £50,000 in six months with a capital of 150 He did. Wise as my father was, he sometimes forgot the wise things he said five minutes after he'd said them. He warned me that 90% of our self-made millionaires are criminals who take a 500 to 1 chance and get away with it by pure luck. Alistair was that sort of criminal. Oh, no, no, not a criminal. That's not like Alistair. He's a fool, perhaps, in business, but not a criminal. Like all solicitors, you think you know my husband better than I do. I tell you, Alistair came back after six months' probation with £50,000 in his pocket instead of the penal servitude he so richly deserved. That man's luck is extraordinary. He always wins. He wins at tennis, he wins at boxing. He won me, the richest heiress in England. But you were a consenting party. If not, why did you put him to the test? Why did you give him 150 to try his luck with? Boxing. Boxing? Yes. Yes, his boxing fascinated me. My father always held that a woman should be able to defend herself. He made me study judo. Judo? Uh, do you mean Hebrew? Hebrew, nonsense. Judo, jiu-jitsu. It's what common people call jiu-jitsu. I could throw you through that window as easily as you handed me that rotten chair. Oh, Japanese wrestle? Oh, that's rather a rough sport for a lady. How dare you call judo a sport? It's a religion. Oh, forgive me. <laughs> uh, go on with your story and please break it to me as gently as you can. I've never had a client like you before. You never will again. No, I don't doubt it for a moment. Now, tell me. Where does Alistair come in? I saw him win a, an amateur heavyweight championship. He has a solar plexus punch no other boxer can withstand. And you married a man because he had a superlative solar plexus punch. Well, he was handsome. He stripped well, unlike most handsome men. I'm not insusceptible to sex appeal, very far from oh, it. Oh, quite, quite. You needn't go into details. I will if I like. It is your business as a solicitor to know the details. I made a very common mistake. I thought this irresistible athlete would prove an ardent lover. It was nothing of the sort. All his ardor was in his fists. Never shall I forget the day. It was during our honeymoon when his coldness infuriated me to such a degree that I went for him with my fists. He knocked me out with that abominable punch in the first exchange. Have you ever been knocked out by a punch in the solar plexus? No, thank heaven. I'm not a pugilist. It does not put you to sleep like a punch on the jaw. When he saw my face contorted in agony and my body writhing on the floor, he was horrified. He said he did it automatically. That he always countered that way, you know, by instinct. I almost respected him for it. Then why do you want to get rid of him? I want to get rid of myself. I want to punish myself for the horrible mess I've made of my life and for marrying an imbecile. And now you put me off with your fooling. I don't know what I want. That's a horrible state of mind. I'm a woman who must always want something and always get it. An acquisitive woman, precisely. It's how splendid. Oh, excuse me. Yes. Oh, one moment. Hold the line. Your husband is outside with a woman. They want to see me. That woman has them in at once. But can I depend on you to control yourself? You can depend on Alistair's fists. I must have a look at seedy stockings. Have them in, I tell you. Send Mr. Fitzfasson and the lady in, please. We shall now see the sort of woman for whom he has deserted me. Oh, I'm thrilled. I expect something marvellous. Don't be a fool. 
Expect something utterly common. What are you doing here? Introduce Why you the female. Patricia Smith is my name, Mrs. Fitzfasten. That is not how you sign your letters, I believe. Now, don't begin making a row, Epi. I was not speaking to you. I was speaking to the woman. You have no right to call her a woman. Now, now, Ali, you promised me. Promised you? How dare he promise you? What right had he to promise you? How dare you make him promise you? I won't have Polly insult you. You don't mind Miss Smith, do you? I don't mind. My sister goes on just like that. <laughs> your sister? You presume to compare your sister to me? Well, only when she goes off at the deep end. Now, you mustn't mind me. There's nothing like letting yourself go if you're built that way. Introduce me to the gentleman, Ali. Yes, of course, I forgot. I'm sorry. And Mr. Julius Sagamore, my solicitor, an old pal, Miss Smith. <laughs> Alias Polly Seedy Stockings. Oh. That's only a pet name, Mr. Sagamore. Smith is the patronymic, as dear, wise old father says. She sets up a wise father. This is the last straw. Oh, do sit down, Miss Smith, won't you? Oh, hello. What's happened to the chair? I have happened to the chair. Let it be a warning to you. Mr. Sagamore, it's like this. Alistair... You I... need not explain. I have explained everything to Mr. Sagamore. And will you please have the decency in his presence and in mine to refer to my husband as Mr. Fitzpatrick, and his Christian name is no concern of yours. Well, if you won't let anyone speak... I am not preventing you nor anybody from speaking. If you have anything to say for yourself, say it. But I am sorry, but it's such a long name. In my little circle, we call him just Ali. Do hear that, Mr. Sagamore? My husband is called Ali by these third-rate people. What right have they to speak of him at all? Am I to endure this? Yes, we know you have to put up with a lot, dearie. Dearie? But that's what the world is like. The world is like that to people who are like that. My world is not your world. Every woman has her own world within her own soul. Mr. Sagamore, I married this man. I admitted him to my world. The world my imagination had peopled with heroes and saints. Never before had a real man been permitted to enter it. I took him to be hero, saint, lover. All in one. What he really was, you can see for yourself. Well, I won't stand for this. Yes, go ahead. Strike me. Show her your knockout punch. Let her see how you treat women. Oh, <laughs> damn! Oh, don't get rattled, Ali. You've only put yourself in the wrong before Mr. Sagamore. I think you'd better go home. Let me have it out with her. Would you have the goodness not to speak of me as her? My name is Mrs. Fitzfazend, and I am not a pronoun. Sorry, but your name's such a tongue twister. Mr. Sagamore, don't you think Ali had better go? It's not right that we should argue about him to his face. Besides, he's worn out. He's hardly slept all night. How do you know that, pray? Never mind how I know it, I do. It was innocent. But where was I to go after you'd driven me out of the house with your tantrums? You, you went to her. I 